You are being told that you need to upgrade your laptop for AI because it's the next big thing. Well, over the last couple of weeks, Sierra and I have tried every AI tool that we could find that supposedly runs on your laptop. Well, today we're going to share whether you need an AI laptop or whether it's just misleading marketing. But what even is an AI laptop? It seems loosely defined as having a processor that has an MPU, also known as a neural engine if you're Apple. Now, if you've somehow escaped the onslaught of marketing around these, an MPU is a special part of the processor, capable of doing some simple lightweight AI tasks, more efficiently than a CPU or GPU. In Windows land, Microsoft has been branding some laptops with an MPU capable of 40 or more tops as a Copilot Plus PC. But here's the first issue. Several Windows manufacturers have been branding their laptops as AI even if they don't have an MPU capable of 40 tops. And many laptops with powerful NVIDIA GPUs capable of much more than 40 tops are not branded as Copilot Plus PCs. But wait, the plot thickens. You see, there are three other Microsoft Copilots, none of which require a Copilot Plus PC laptop. There is Microsoft's Copilot itself, which uses OpenAI models like ChatGPT. It can be launched from any laptop with the latest version of Windows. Then there is Microsoft's 365 Copilot, which is a rebrand of Office that contains an AI helper, which isn't available yet. Then there is Microsoft's GitHub Copilot for software developers, which can generate simple code snippets, the kind I used to copy and paste from Stack Overflow. Now, on the Apple side, we have Apple Intelligence, which is essentially a smarter Siri that enables some AI features on Apple-specific apps. It is available on any of the M-series MacBooks, which means there is no minimum tops required. The original M1 processor only had 11. Now that we all know exactly what an AI laptop is, let's see if the current AI tools available on laptops themselves are actually useful, as well as whether they even need a processor with a 40 tops MPU. So, here's Sierra to walk you through the nine different AI tools that we tried. First, we'll test the camera and imaging applications. Adobe's Photoshop has AI processing for some effects that they call neural filters. For example, one of them makes your photo look like a painting. I quickly found that most of these filters were processed on device. When they are on device, Adobe's processing for these filters uses the integrated GPU, not the NPU. I confirmed this on Qualcomm, Intel, Apple, and AMD-powered laptops. Plus, these filters seemed pretty gimmicky to me, so their usefulness to you may vary. Next, we have Zoom, which blurs your background when you are on a conference call. It uses AI to detect where your face is. This feature is very useful for hiding your messy room in a video call. On the latest Intel and Qualcomm-powered laptops, this function does use the NPU. On the latest AMD laptops, it uses the iGPU. One thing we noticed when we tested this on different laptops is that the marketing about the NPU being more efficient is likely true. We experience less heat and fan noise from the laptops that use the NPU instead of the iGPU. Clearly, there may be other factors at play, as these are all different laptops, and it's not possible to get the exact same laptops with each of these different CPUs, but we'll say we are reasonably confident that the NPU helps. Lastly, for camera apps, we tested both Windows Studio FX and Acer's proprietary camera app, which do both make use of the NPU. Studio FX and Acer's app are both effective at blurring your background and touching up your appearance, but the other effects were either silly or poorly implemented. Check out when Josh tried these features on the Acer Swift 14 AI. Another AI laptop specialty is supposedly the AI Companions, Copilot for Windows and Apple Intelligence for macOS. In addition to this, many laptop manufacturers are now including their own AI Companion, like Asus's Virtual Assistant. I, of course, had to try out all three. My main questions were, is the information correct? And does it process on the laptop itself or the cloud? Starting with Copilot, which I think is a fine enough tool. It is an AI companion to help you with simple tasks like image generation or text summarization using OpenAI's models. Copilot comes up when you press that newfangled key on your keyboard where the right control used to be. Or you can just click the one that comes pinned to your taskbar. Right away, we realized it doesn't utilize the NPU. I believe the processing is server-side since I didn't see CPU or iGPU spikes for these tasks either. Something Copilot doesn't do is interact with the files or applications on your laptop which makes it feel no more useful than the online tools doing the same thing. For there to be a real reason to get an AI laptop, Copilot would need to be enriched with data from your laptop to give you better results. Plus, of course, privacy controls if you don't want that. We believe this is coming with Microsoft's 365 Copilot rebrand of Office, but as we showed you, it doesn't work right now. Anyway, if you're curious what I did to test Copilot, I of course had to try its dating profile generator. And honestly, it wasn't too shabby. It was a little awkwardly worded for the writer and me. For example, it said I am often having fun conversations, which is just not something a human would say about themselves, I think. 
but basic AI gripes aside, it truly is about as useful as any of these tools, with oversight. So, what about Apple Intelligence? Well, it's another ChatGPT knockoff. It allows Siri to conduct smart searches, and it does use the Apple Neural Engine working well enough. One of the only unique features it's meant to have has been reported to be very buggy, though, the notification summaries. Here's some examples of it providing incorrect news information from the Apple Intelligence Fails subreddit. Apple Intelligence also adds some AI features in native apps like Notes or Photos. I tried out some of these Notes features like proofreading and rewriting. The proofreading was solid. I'd call it very usable. However, I will call out that the rewrite feature seems pretty, well, icky? It feels like they grab a thesaurus and make your wording more friendly, professional, or concise, depending on which option you choose. It just smells a lot like a tool that could be used to plagiarize someone else's work and not necessarily add any extra value to your own work. It doesn't seem to comprehend the text it is rewriting or the format it's in at all. It really didn't like bullet points either. I highly recommend using the proofread, but I do not recommend the rewrite feature. Let's now look at Asus's virtual assistant feature, nicknamed Omni, which is not exclusive to Copilot Plus PCs, by the way, except all of its actual AI functionality is limited to a list of less than 10 laptops. Super weird. You would think it would work on our Lunar Lake Zen book that's marketed as AI? It does not. Anyway, it uses generative AI to chat, do research, analyze documents quickly, and the like. It uses Meta's Llama 3 language model, and when it's working, it utilizes the iGPU, not the NPU. This even goes for when I had a dedicated GPU available to it. It still used the iGPU. Another one to cross off the list for not using the NPU. It also works like your normal chat GPT bot for the most part. It has a feature called Librarian, where it will read documents for you, summarize or proofread them, and you can even go into a Q&A mode about the document. To try it out, I put in my recent script about the CES 2025 processor and graphics releases that I know very well. This video, as I'm sure some of you know, is pretty structured. There are different sections for each processor release with a similar explanation format for each one. I thought this would make it relatively simple for an LLM to analyze and regurgitate. I was wrong. <laughs> and this exemplifies one of my biggest problems with AI right now. Firstly, its summary feature was off. It said that the 285H chip was the highest SKU of the Arrow Lake HX processors. It is not. It is an Arrow Lake H processor. Everything else was technically right. It wasn't a very good summary, though, as it just listed specs at me and didn't tell me what the video was about. I would worry that the information it's providing wouldn't be accurate enough to utilize. So let's try the Q&A feature instead. I started by asking for the max TDP of the Kraken Point chips. It immediately told me this was not mentioned in the text, then proceeded to tell me about the TDP of Fire Range, Air Lake HX, and incorrectly, Meteor Lake. It sounds like me in high school when I didn't read the full book for the book report, but I remembered the beginning chapters really well, probably because we talked about them in class. I tried to ask it again in a few different ways, and it gave me an incorrect or unsure answer three out of four times. The one time it answered my question correctly is when I was leading the horse to water by asking, is the Ryzen 7 processor from the Kraken Point range? So not really a success there. I wasn't even asking about the TDP that time. When I asked it about Intel's releases and some differences between the H and HX chips, it seemed to do fine. But overall, I would not trust its analysis or summarization. Now, let's get into other Windows features. Live Captions is a Windows feature that can transcribe anything you're watching, and it can be turned on from your taskbar menu. This is already available on any Windows device and usually loads quickly once activated. There is a new add-on AI feature that enables live translation, however, and you do need a Copilot Plus PC. On such a laptop, it promises to translate anything you're watching from 44 different languages. This download of live captions with the additional language files takes forever. I had it running for a full workday on my ProArt with AMD before finally giving up on it. I came back to it the next day, and it suddenly started working, even though I had canceled out of the download, so I'm not sure what happened there. We also couldn't get it working on any of the other Copilot Plus PCs we had around with Qualcomm or Intel processors. So I had a feeling this tool was a little buggy, but it got even worse. When I tested the standard transcribing in English, it worked, but the NPU was not utilized. Unfortunately, the AI live translation didn't seem to work at all. When I switched from English to Spanish or Japanese, the subtitles stopped working completely. This means that the feature supposedly exclusive to Copilot Plus PCs was not truly available yet, at least for me. I did some Googling and found that I am not the only one experiencing this specific issue. Microsoft's troubleshooting steps were less than helpful. They basically amounted to, it might start working eventually. I can say with confidence that I have had three or four Windows updates since then, and it has not. Big disappointment here, as one of the best use cases for AI is accessibility. A live translation tool available on your laptop would be amazing if it worked.
Lastly, Windows Recall feature takes snapshots of your screen to help you find something you previously had open. This add-on received a lot of flack when it was first announced, and rightfully so. It's now only available in the Windows Insider program, but I was eventually able to get the preview version working after following all of Microsoft's provided eligibility steps. Good news, it absolutely utilizes the NPU. Once I was in and able to review my day of work, I realized it was more secure than I expected. Firstly, it requires Windows Hello. This means that every single time you open Recall, it's gonna make sure you are at the computer, either via your PIN, face, or fingerprint. Basically, your nosy roommate won't be able to search through your past activity unless they know your PIN, so let's hope they don't. On top of that, it doesn't record in private browsers, and it can be told not to record on certain websites or applications. I am glad to see the inclusion of all these security features as I think they are an absolute must. Not to mention that all this data is stored locally and is not being sent to the cloud. Some people don't trust this last point, so we're lucky that Microsoft has made an opt-in rather than opt-out. With security out of the way, how well does it actually work? Well, not as well as I would have hoped. Recall does not know how to answer smart questions about your workday, which is what I personally thought it was supposed to do. What shirt was the person in this video wearing, or what keyboard layout did the computer in this image use? Did not work for me. Plus, it doesn't integrate with Copilot, probably due to privacy, so you couldn't ask Copilot those smarter questions either that would leverage your personal data set. What worked phenomenally well, however, was searching or selecting text from the saved snapshots. You could also search by visual cues like video, and it would show you videos you had watched. Another feature is that you can take screenshots from something you did a week ago. Between all of these, I think the text search feature would be the most useful if you were researching something. You could look for any mention of a certain word or phrase throughout your long reading sessions and find it immediately, whether it was in a PDF article or video. So overall, I think Recall has some potential for office productivity or a student's use case, as I did find it a little helpful. Emphasis on little though, as I realized I rarely used it, if at all, even when I was actively writing and researching things. I mostly just used it to test its own capabilities. Your mileage may vary, but I know I likely wouldn't use it on my own personal computer as it creeps me out. Now, I have a few closing thoughts on AI tools based on everything we found. The first is that many of these products were not a normal part of my workflow, which made me question when I was using them if your average buyer would even use tools such as these. The second thought I have is that many of the chat tools specifically not only lacked key functionality I'd be seeking from them, but they were often wrong. If you have to double check everything an AI tells you, are you actually being more efficient? And third, I do think the NPU is going to prove valuable in the long term, but it's clear that very few applications are properly taking advantage of what it can do. At most, we saw utilization of the NPU hit about a third of what it's capable of. Development just doesn't seem to have caught up with the technology yet. So do you need to upgrade to an AI laptop? Well, as you probably guessed it, the answer is no. That being said, the latest generation of laptops have made big leaps forward in other areas that we believe actually do matter. More performance, less heat, less fan noise, and better battery life. If manufacturers want us to buy new laptops, I'd strongly recommend they prioritize these improvements versus AI. Furthermore, if you're a manufacturer developing AI tools for your laptop itself, please pause and answer the following questions. Does any buyer actually want the AI tools that you're building, or are you just building it to say you have an AI tool? If the answer is yes, are you the company to build such a tool? Can you build it better than any other company already doing something similar? If the answer to either of these questions is a no, stop and spend that money in other areas that will improve the laptop or just sell us the laptop for a cheaper price. In fact, save the money you are spending bombarding us with AI marketing and just make the laptop cheaper. I promise you, you'll be more successful. If you're interested in buying a new laptop, AI or not, we list our favorites on our website at justjosh.tech. We have specific recommendations for different types of use cases, a helpful price tracker, and we even link you to the retailer currently offering the best deal. It's quickly becoming a hub for laptop buying, so go check it out. YouTube is shtick time, smash the like button and get subscribed. It helps us grow and makes our parents very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.